YouTube, good morning. Well, I don't know when you're watching this, but it's morning while I'm recording this. That first intro sequence that you saw in today's video, that is the first sequence of video that I've made using the Nikon D780, and I'm impressed with the results. So that video was made with the Atmos Ninja 5 and the 780, so I was able to get 10-bit color as well as N-Log, and I purposely shot that in less than ideal lighting conditions to really push the autofocus and push the camera. The results were crazy, and I included some footage from my Nikon D810 to show you what older Nikon video looked like in comparison to the upgraded video on this DSLR. So today's video, I want to talk about this 780 and why I think it is a beast of a camera. It's the first DSLR that Nikon has ever really delivered in the video department. But with those things that are finally delivered in the video department, you get a few weird little flaws that I want to talk about today. So today's video, we're going to go over this camera, going to give you my thoughts on it. I'm going to talk about who exactly this thing is for, and hopefully by the end of the video, you'll know if you are one of those people or not. Now, one thing that I want to note, okay, today we're talking about the Nikon universe, all right? It's like Marvel and DC. Camera companies are the same way. It's easy to watch this video and I'm talking about certain things and you say, why don't you just switch to Sony? Why don't you just switch to Canon? I get that. That's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about Nikon users and the Nikon lineup specifically. So as I'm going through everything, please don't drop a comment saying, switch to Sony, it would be so much better. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the Nikon world, okay? But while you are in the comment section, feel free to leave a comment and make sure you hit that thumbs up button on the video. Let's get this video to 2,000 thumbs up today. Not in like a month, today, 2,000 thumbs up. So if you're watching the video, go hit that now. It helps it out and it helps out the channel. Now what makes the D780 so special for Nikon users is it's the first time that Nikon has ever really put out a hybrid DSLR camera that delivers on both the photography side and the video side. You're getting pro level photography specs as well as pro level video specs. That's never happened in a DSLR before. It has happened in the Z mirrorless lineup that Nikon just released, but as far as DSLR, SLRs with a mirror where it looks like this, it's never been done before, and that's why it is such a big deal. So quickly speaking on the stills of this camera, in my personal opinion, any camera released in the last four years for photography is gonna hold up, especially full frame cameras. I mentioned it when I got this camera. If I was only doing stills, I'd probably still use my Nikon D810 because it's so good. For the most part, any camera upgrades that are happening right now, the upgrades are being made in the video department and there's very small, minor upgrades to the photography department over time. So for me, yeah, the stills on this, they're gonna be great. The stills on the 750 are gonna be great as well. So like like I said, you can't go wrong with this or any pro level or hobbyist level full frame camera that's been made probably in the last five years if you're only using it for photography. Now the 780 adopts all the video improvements from that Nikon Z lineup that I just mentioned. If you're not a Nikon user, the Nikon Z series is Nikon's first mirrorless series of cameras. There's two of them right now. And the Z6, it was a big deal for Nikon because they finally added some video features that everyone wanted. That's considered the first Nikon camera that can actually hold up in video. So basically everything from that camera got put into this 780, which means we get improved video autofocus, which is huge. When you're using this camera before, like on my Nikon D810, when you point the camera at one thing in continuous autofocus in video and then move it to something else, you got this constant hunting with the lens. It was just like... <laughs> It just, it sucked. It was not good. It made the video unusable. Now with the 780, you move the camera and point it at something, move it to something else, it locks in and sticks really well. There's no more of that hunting, which is exactly what everyone wanted. Doesn't sound that hard for Nikon to figure out, but they finally got it right. So the autofocus is nice and clean. Every now and again, it does miss, but that's to be expected with pretty much anything. I'm impressed with it and I really enjoy it. And you also get this addition of HDMI out recording, which I already mentioned, which I used to shoot that initial clip. Still figuring out the color grading process on everything with that clip. There's definitely a new workflow added in there for me. But with the addition of an Atmos Ninja 5, you can now get 10-bit color as well as N-Log, which really takes the quality of the video to the next level and also takes the capability and the potential of the video to the next level. So that is a big addition. Now with the 780, there are some things that you give up. These are the 
things that kind of make the camera flawed a little bit because it is still a DSLR. One, when you buy the camera, yes, it's right around two grand and not a bad price point at all for what you're getting. You do have to pay for all these extra features if you want to get them in the video department. So you need to pay for your Atmos Ninja so you can get 10 bit color. You need to pay for your SSD drive right here. You need to pay for an HDMI cable if you don't have it. You need to pay for the card reader. There's just a lot of other expenses that come with the camera if you wanna maximize the video capability. So you're looking at probably another thousand dollars tacked on to the price of the camera. Also with this being a DSLR, you're gonna to have to deal with a little bit of added weight and size, unfortunately. I mean, it is what it is. If you wanna stick with the DSLR, it's gonna be bigger. That pretty much comes with the territory. Another thing that unfortunately, because this is a DSLR versus a mirrorless, in-body stabilization is not a feature that is on here. Everyone was excited about the Nikon D6, thinking that it would have in-body stabilization as well as all these video features. That would have been incredible and amazing. It didn't. So right now the Nikon Z series is still the camera lineup with the in-body stabilization, which is a big deal, especially when you have, you know, a longer focal length, like 120 on this zoom, you can really see the camera shake. Even though this is a VR lens, it would be nice to have that stabilization. And if you go with the DSLR route over the mirrorless route in the Nikon lineup, you're not gonna get it, unfortunately. Now the last big flaw of a Nikon DSLR for video, and it's something I'm gonna have to work around, it's something you saw in that intro clip, I added a note on there when you could hear it, is the fact that the lens lineup that Nikon has right now for all their DSLRs is not designed for video autofocus. You get this noise of the camera focusing, and it's like a clicking noise. You can hear it in the video audio. Now granted, that audio was recorded uh, with the onboard mic. I didn't have an external mic, so you might be able to hide it a little bit, but it is gonna be something you have to work around if you're using autofocus and also using sound from the camera. For me, I'm probably just gonna manually focus a lot of the time to avoid that, but it is something that's a reality, unfortunately, because Nikon, I guess, I don't know, I guess they just didn't have the foresight to design their lenses with a focusing system that didn't make that noise. So now with the Z series lineup, uh, these lenses are made to have that quiet focusing. So if you buy a Nikon Z series camera, you're gonna get these lenses that focus quietly and you're not gonna deal with that noise that you're gonna have to deal with on a 780. So with that being said, you're probably watching this video thinking why on earth would anyone buy this DSLR camera when it has all these issues that are fixed by the mirrorless lineup. And I agree with you, but here's the thing. As a Nikon user, someone who's been using the cameras for I think almost seven years now, six years, I've had my 810 for five years, I had my 610 for about two years I think, um, you're invested in this system, the DSLR system with the lenses that Nikon has made. And I've learned to deal with the flaws that come with this. So for me, I view this 780 as basically a bridge camera for Nikon. It's actually a really smart move on their part because they have this mirrorless lineup that they're still developing. It solves all these problems. It really brings Nikon into the video world, but it's just not there yet. They're still figuring out the cameras. They're still introducing the entire lens lineup and it makes for this little transitional period. Sony went through the same thing where they introduced some of their mirrorless cameras. They didn't have all the lenses out and it really took a few years for everything to pick up steam and grow and get to the point that it is at now. And I think Nikon is in a similar situation if not a bigger situation because they have such a history of DSLR cameras as well as DSLR lenses. It's gonna be a little bit of a tricky road to navigate all of the dedicated Nikon users from one system to this other system that works better if they want all these video features. So for me, this 780 feels like the perfect bridge between the Nikon DSLR lineup and their new mirrorless lineup. So if you're a user like me, someone who wants the best of Nikon's photography, but also wants the latest video features, and you don't wanna dive all the way into this mirrorless lineup just yet because it's still developing, they put this thing out. So for me, I think this camera is a home run, honestly. I think it checks a box that Nikon really needed to check. There's gonna be a lot of people out there who I think are just like me, who are really invested in this DSLR lineup. They don't wanna jump into mirrorless just yet as it's still developing, and this camera is gonna bridge that gap for a few years and allow people to stick with Nikon while they figure out this whole mirrorless thing, while they continue to improve, instead of jumping to another camera system, which is definitely not what Nikon wants at a time like this.
So those are my thoughts on the 780. I'm loving this thing. The color grades, they stick. Everything looks good. It's going to improve a lot of the videos on this channel as well as allow me to potentially take on some other video clients that I haven't in the past. Mostly I've done only photography with a little bit of video and I really think this camera is going to help me do both of those things. So hit that thumbs up button if you haven't yet. Subscribe to the channel so you can hear more thoughts on the 780 as I use it. If I make any other videos about it down the line as I've played with it more. Let me know your thoughts about this camera if you're a Nikon user. If you're not a Nikon user, feel free to uh, drop your comments about the state of Nikon cameras. I know it's an interesting place, especially if you're a user of another brand or something like that. Always interested to hear y'all's thoughts. Wanted to share mine today, so thank you for watching. Hit that thumbs up, subscribe. I'll see y'all next time. Thank you.